Hi, welcome to the May weather trend forecast. Although it's spring and not summer, this month can start to bring very warm or even hot weather, particularly later on. Is that looking likely to be the case this year or not? I'll begin by taking a look at the view across Europe and the North Atlantic. The animation runs from 18 GMT Monday the 2nd. And at the outset, it's quite a nondescript picture. There are some showers around, but also dry conditions in much of the UK. Not a great deal changes through the short term. Some showery rain pushes eastwards and then warmer air moves into the south for a time through Friday and into weekend. It looks like there'll be some patchy rain moving southwards, then high pressure builds back and somewhat cooler air returns. Into the early part of next week, things do start to change on this sequence. The high pressure slips southwards and an Atlantic influence returns, bringing outbreaks of rain over the northern half of the country. In the south, it looks as though it's going to be staying mostly dry at this point. In terms of the temperatures, here's a Mograx plot for London. Maximums there increasing through the first few days, potentially up to about 20, 21 Celsius on the 5th, then just dipping a little going further forwards. Up to Glasgow, the uh, maximums are lower, so it's cooler. There's good consistency going out to the 5th, the 6th, and then later on, that spread increases, so a wider range of solutions, but generally cooler in the northwest. Rainfall, as I say, it looks quite nondescript through the first week to 10 days. Here's a plot for London from Mogreps. There are a few little spikes there, and the number of them probably increases through the second week between the 6th and the uh, 10th of May, but it's not looking wet at all, perhaps just a little bit of rain around at times. The equivalent plot for Notting Nottingham, so not much further north, shows more spikes, but again, not particularly wet by any means. A similar story for Leeds and Manchester as well, towards the end, perhaps from around the 8th, a few bigger spikes there indicating more significant amounts of rain as a possibility. Only a possibility though because those runs are in a minority. Finally, up to Glasgow. This time there is a difference. There's an ongoing uh, risk of rainfall. As I say, it's not even here looking overly wet, but I think more consistency. More of the runs are forecasting rain to be falling at any given time indicating a wetter pattern. Going a little bit further forward, so from the through the second week of the month really, air temperatures here on the London plot from the GEFS model are mostly above the average. The thick black line there is a 30-year norm. The purple line is the ensemble mean. And the ensemble mean there is staying above the black line really for most of the period. In terms of rain, there are some hints now of changes developing. Quite a few small spikes, and then one or two really big spikes showing up there. Just a low chance because there are uh, 33 runs, I think, being plotted on this chart. And there's only one, two, or three, I think, about three of the individual runs which are going for those very large rain totals. It's just something to keep an eye on. Most runs are suggesting there is a chance of some rain, but much smaller amounts. Up to Glasgow, again, this is significantly different, I think, to the plot for London and other southern locations, because there are far more rain spikes through the second week and more bigger ones too. It's a significantly wetter picture in the northwest. And that really ties in with the animation which showed high pressure slipping southwards as we went through the second week of the month, allowing that Atlantic flow to return, particularly across the northern half of the UK. I think, therefore, to summarise, quite a bitty picture to begin with, a lot of dry weather around, but some showery rain at times, warmer in the south, 
high pressure event building across virtually the whole of the UK for several days before it starts to slip away southwards and a more changeable or unsettled pattern pushes across the northern half of the UK at least through the second week of the month. So what about the second half of May? Very important, of course, to point out that at this range, it really is just about looking for the likelihood of temperatures being above or below the average, rainfall amounts also being higher or lower than the norm. It's impossible to give much more detailed information than that. Here's the pressure anomaly chart from the GEFS model for the week beginning Sunday the 15th of May. Yellow shading here over the entire part of the UK is indicating a weekly positive anomaly. Slightly higher pressure than the 30 year norm. It's not a strong anomaly though, so I would expect there to be an Atlantic influence high pressure not dominating completely, just perhaps a weaker Atlantic flow than the 30-year average would suggest. Going forwards to the week beginning Sunday the 22nd, if anything, the positive anomaly to the west is a little bit stronger. It's still indicating, though, that high, higher than average pressure will be covering the UK when it's taken over the week as a as a whole, so averaged out. And really, the, the pattern across the whole of Europe is suggesting a relatively uh, weak Atlantic flow relative to, uh, in, in comparison to the norm, at least across western and northwestern parts of Europe. It's a little bit different as you head further eastwards. Air temperatures, so these are about 1500 meters above sea level. Again, this is an, an anomaly chart for the week beginning Sunday the 15th. The reds over the UK are indicating a positive anomaly, plus two Celsius when, when averaged out over the period. And really, it's warmer than the norm virtually everywhere on this chart. Going forwards to the week beginning the 22nd, not a great deal has changed. I think the positive anomaly has weakened slightly but it's still suggesting that temperatures at 1500 meters above sea level will be higher than the 30 year norm. Moving down to the two meter temperatures, what we actually experience, the London plot here, the reds, the two red lines are showing the mean forecast minimums and maximums. They are both above the thick black line, which is the 30 year norm. In fact, there's, there's quite a strong signal here for temperatures to be above the average throughout most of the second half of May. Going up to Glasgow, this time it's a weaker signal, slightly positive, but most of the runs are close to that thick black line, the 30 year norm suggesting that it will be somewhat cooler as you head north westwards in terms of the in terms of how that compares to the average for each for, for the given locations. I'm talking a lot about temperatures being above the average. Why is the, why is it possible to be relatively confident about that? I think a big factor is sea surface temperatures. Um, you can probably see the UK on the right hand edge of this map. I've circled it. The uh, red covers the uh, North Atlantic, the North Sea, up to Iceland and Greenland. And the key thing to see here is that the yellow shading, the orange shading around the UK is indicating that sea surface temperatures are currently above the long term average. Therefore, when winds are blowing in from the west or the southwest, even the northwest, the, the, there will be more warming of the air taking place at lower levels. That's increasing the chance of temperatures in the United Kingdom being above that 30 year average. At the start, I was talking about the possibility of May bringing very warm or even hot conditions. 
It's not, of course, I, it's, I can't say that's going to happen or that it won't happen. It's just, there's just a chance. And as an example, here's the uh, today's GFS 06 Z update. It's just, it's a deterministic model run. So just a snapshot shouldn't be used at this range to make a forecast. And I'm only showing it for interest because it highlights what can happen. Slow moving area of low pressure to the west for southwest of the United Kingdom, high pressure centered to the east or the northeast. That results in very warm air being funneled up from North Africa, Southern Europe, right across the UK. A plume, a Spanish plume as this pattern is sometimes referred to. That means temperatures are like this according to the GFS. Mid to upper 20 Celsius, so 27 being shown there in parts of the southeast, and GFS often under, undershoots by a degree or two. If this pattern developed as it's showing, I wouldn't be at all surprised to see values of 28 or even 29 Celsius down here in the south. Even the north of Scotland there, seeing 25 Celsius. Remember though, I'm, this isn't a forecast by any means, it's just an illustration of how quickly things can warm up from mid-May onwards, especially with those sea surface temperatures in the Atlantic being higher than what they should be. So to summarize the month, the first half begins with showers in places, but also a good deal of dry weather. High pressure then probably builds and it turns more settled in all parts of the UK for a time. However, it, that starts to slip away southwards during the second week and Atlantic disturbances push across the northern half of the UK. They bring an increase in risk of showers or longer spells of rain, possibly windier conditions too. The suggestion from the computer models is that high pressure will probably hold on in the south for a time, therefore it stays drier. Temperatures often close to or above the average through, through the first half of May. The second half, the signal is for it to be slightly drier than average, with pressure being a little bit higher than the norm. Also, the indications are that temperatures will be above the average once again. The wettest conditions, though, are likely to be in the north, although all parts of the UK will probably see some rain through this period. So, there we have it. Above average temperatures, probably slightly drier than average overall, and an increased chance relative to the norm of it turning a very warm or even hot at times through the second half of the month. Although, as I say, and I'm going to really emphasize this, that is still quite a low chance. It's just something to keep an eye on. The theme is very much though on temperatures being close to or at least a little bit above the norm when averaged out over the month as a whole. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, then please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons below. Thanks very much for watching now. Bye.